Hello, everybody. All right. Um, I've had this idea of cooking in my mind, and I've got about 10 or 15 subscribers who watch my videos with any regularity. Most of my videos, that's about all they get, right? Although I have hundreds of subscribers and uh, a over a quarter of a million views, I think, right? It's just the way it is. Um, so this is for you guys, especially Complex Blackness and Looper Radical. You guys watch my videos with some regularity. You comment, you ask questions. So here it is. <clears throat> my problem, my, okay, I'm going to say this for you, but I really wish the general public would get this. I think you two probably already know this, but um, you might enjoy me saying it nonetheless. How do you break someone's bones with jujitsu, or how to break someone's bones with jujitsu? Um, I keep thinking back to uh, someone who was commenting on my videos years ago. I talked about um, a sparring session that got really heated in Edison, New Jersey, Edison slash Highland Park, and it was a uh, there was a. I think he he was a retired cop or maybe still active but getting near the end of his career he opened a fitness center in Highland Park and he was I think at least a third degree black belt in Ishinru Karate with Gary Alexander and the late Gary Alexander and he was very generous with me you know I, I paid for my membership for this fitness center and over the course of a summer for three months I rode my bike there I used the fitness center and I took his Ishinru Karate class. And I was a brown belt in Ishinru at the time with uh, Sensei Carl San Marco at Dragon Star Karate down the road a bit in Edison. And, uh, you know, also a black belt in the ATA, also had done Kung Fu. But this was kind of like my, um, it was 2000, 2001. It was after 9 11. So it was my graduate school phase. And. I was having fun. He let me wear my brown belt and work out, learn all the advanced stuff, and spar with the brown belts, the black belts, the green belts, you know. And it was all right. But uh, I was in a role with one of his brown belts, who was also a purple belt in jujitsu. I've said the story before. It got heated. We were sparring. It went to the ground, and I did my traditional techniques, which usually involve attacking the groin, and. Um, a little bit of Kino Mutai, and, you know, he's like, well, that wouldn't really work. I have a cup on, and then I intensified, and he did not want to close into grappling range again. He didn't want to touch me up close, and then I peppered him with jabs and crosses and a few kicks, but I remember my hands were just all over his face. Not hard. We had the foam pads on, but I talked about, you know, I very passionately believe that there are people that invested a lot of time and money, years, maybe a decade, in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu and perhaps other grappling styles who have some misconceptions about what happens in street altercations, in life and death altercations, in combat altercations, in grappling range. You must know how to operate in grappling range. You must, you must, you must. If you don't practice it, if you don't at least uh, touch on it once a month, right? The bare absolute minimum and do some kind of realistic drilling and, and hopefully rolling, you're unprepared, okay? Especially if you're really good at kicking and punching and clawing and, you know, using knife hands and palms and knees. Um, if you're good at weapons, if you're, you know, you got to learn how to grapple. I'm talking to you, Jose. Um, although you did wrestle in high school. That was a long time ago, right? But if you have no competency and zero practice in street grappling, it's a big weakness. But on the other hand, your opponent won't know to submit. All right? You're going to have to control that person, right? And remember, the law... In most states and throughout the US it generally says once you've neutralized the threat you can't continue to punish a person so if I've taken someone down and I've mounted them and I've got them in an Americana and they stop struggling or I've got them to where they can't struggle 
I can't just go ahead and dislocate that elbow and shoulder out of spite. As a matter of fact, I may have to take a risk and transition to a control position, right? I, I may have to call for help and so on and so forth. I talked about this in the other video, right? So I said a few words to that guy. I did a few things. He probably didn't like it. And one of my YouTube, um, one person who viewed the video said in the comment section, if you did that to me, I'd break every bone in your body. If you're still here, probably not. You can't. You don't know how. And the reason you don't know how is because you only know Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Even if you attacked every joint in my body, which you physically can't because most of the articulations aren't accessible via Jiu Jitsu, you cannot break my spine or dislocate my discs with just about any Jiu Jitsu technique. It cannot be done. Right, you may possibly be able to dislocate my hip joint, but you'd have to batter me into submission so you could isolate me in that position, right? So, if you want to be able to break someone's bones using jujitsu, you'd have to use Japanese jujitsu or one of its related offspring, judo, from which Gracie Jiu Jitsu comes from. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu comes from Gracie, from judo. Gracie and Machado and all the jiu-jitsu families of Brazil, it comes from judo, Kodokan judo. Fact. If I had a mic, I'd drop it. It may have other influences, but the Gracies themselves say our jiu-jitsu has nothing to do with Japanese jiu-jitsu, which isn't true because judo comes from Japanese jiu-jitsu. Some of the techniques have been unchanged for centuries. Who knows, maybe even millennia, right? Some of them are common to humanity, like the hip toss and shoulder throw. Yeah, it's basically something that occurs even in Europe, arm, armored knights. You throw a hip toss, you take the guy down, you do a mount or a side mount, draw your dagger and push it through the eye slits and try to maybe even hammer it in there so you can get to the brain case, you know. Um, that's what combat was like, right? Um, not saying go and do these things. So if you want to break your opponent's bones using jiu-jitsu, how would you do it? You would use a strike and a temi because surprise, surprise, surprise. Both Japanese jiu-jitsu and Kodokan judo have a repertoire of strikes, even kicks, and kick defenses. Some of that comes from classic jiu-jitsu, and some of it comes from Gichin Funakoshi collaborating with uh, Jigoro Kano, or Kano Jigoro, <laughs> you know, if you want to get all technical. Um, and Gracie Jiu Jitsu does have some strikes, but it de emphasizes them, right? They spend far less time developing their strikes than, say, Daito Ryu or Hako Ryu or something like that, right? Um, I have a black belt in a Gendai Budo, a modern martial art that is derived from Aiki Jiu Jitsu. Prior to that, I had about a year of training in another form of Aiki Jiu Jitsu related thing and I was lucky enough to learn the techniques up to brown belt but you know not to say I was proficient in them but I was a white belt <laughs> um, so a temi if you throw a strike with a hand or a knee or an elbow to the jaw you stand a chance of actually breaking it. It may just detach, but it's more likely to break before it detaches. It's kind of the way it is. You could throw a punch at someone's mouth and possibly knock out a teeth. Breaking them is incredibly difficult, but chances are you cut your hand. Most common bones you would break using a jujitsu technique strike would be the floating ribs. They often break off. Stomping on someone's instep, okay? cracking the thin bones um, incidentally how do you break a bone what, what is the place to hit to break a bone and this is assuming you have sufficient force a bone has a length the ends are thicker than the center they tend to be thickest at the ends and taper to an even length right and so if you hit dead center with enough force with follow through you can break a bone it's incredibly difficult to do if your style of jiu-jitsu has borrowed 
from Kung Fu, Karate, uh, Taekwondo, or Muay Thai, especially Muay Thai with their big swinging roundhouse kicks. It's possible you may throw a kick and the person will block with the radius or absorb and break it. I once broke a guy's arm in sparring at the New Brunswick Boxing Gym because he was turtled up and I hit this way and broke both bones. Okay, I'm proud of the fact that I was able to kick that way. I'm not proud of doing it. Martial artists are a schizophrenic bunch. Okay, but let's think about that. Now, what is the other way using a jujitsu type technique? Even some that kind of exist in Gracie's jujitsu. What's another way to break someone's bones? An incredibly hard, well timed throw. Catching the opponent at the moment of greatest commitment on a hard floor like concrete, right? A floor with zero give, or perhaps with protuberance like a rock or something, or a pipe. It is conceivable a hard shoulder throw, a, um, a hip toss, a double leg, single leg tape to take down, could throw that person down hard enough to break a bone. It does happen in judo quite a bit. Um, if you use a slam, you know, picking the opponent up bodily and s driving them down, a pile driver, uh, kind of imagine uh, grabbing the opponent by the waist and sort of chucking yourself forward and slamming them down. They're illegal in Gracie Jiu Jitsu competitions, I know that for sure, because I've participated in a Gracie Jiu Jitsu competition. Um, for that very reason. And in class, when we, when we practiced shoulder throws, you sort of drop to your knees as you threw your classmate because you wanted to avoid a hard fall. Another way is throwing your opponent and landing on top of them as they fall. I broke someone's ribs accidentally. I had a, a flatmate, a housemate. When I first moved into this town, I had a couple, and they were kind of degenerate stoner drinkers. And the one guy, Ashley, just kept saying, I want to work out with you, I want to spar you. And I knew he had no skill. Um, but he followed me to the gym one day and insisted on sparring. And I'm like, I don't want to hurt this guy. Because I watched him attempt to kick the bag and everything. He didn't know what he was doing. And he had brought two of his friends to watch, a male and a female. So I think his ego wanted to show them how awesome he was. And I don't know, he was on a lot of drugs. Maybe that's why he thought he could spar with me. So I said, I'm just going to grapple with you. I said, he said, no, I want to fight. I'm like, all right, you do what you do. I do what I do. And he opened up and I closed in, took him down and dropped him and went to mount him. And he just started going, ah, I can't move. I can't breathe. And I rebroken one of his ribs that he'd broken in prison. Because he got beat up in prison for thump something, and he was he's a thin guy. All right. Not much muscle on his frame. So um, those are the main ways. I think, look, getting back to a Temi, there is a way you could break um, thicker bones, conceivably, like the bones of the face and everything, which is if you do as many classic jujitsu and judo techniques do, if you throw a guy down, and while you're standing, pile drive a punch to his jaw or his temple or stomp on pretty much anywhere on his body, you generate tremendous amounts of force. If your heel connects, for example, with the side of his head or his, even his sternum, you could crack, cause a break, cause internal damage. Um, and, uh, you know, again, not saying do these things. But the, they exist. This is for informational purposes only. Know your force. Know your morality. Right? A at the very least, know, know the law. That's probably a better thing to say. Know the law. I don't assume everybody's morality is the same as mine and vice versa. Right? So um, that's something to think about. Right? And... Um, so yeah, to that guy who said he would break every bone in my body, I reply, you can't. If you want to learn how, you would have to become my student. <laughs> you would have to pay me, and you'd have to pay me quite handsomely. And you'd have to make a written agreement with me, agreeing to many stipulations such as, you know, you, you will not 
say inflammatory things and threats of violence and death on the internet or in person you will not start a fight if you're in a fight you will only use that force which is necessary you will avoid fights first and foremost and then i would teach that person and because you've kind of demonstrated you're a really unstable person and you really don't understand the martial arts my fee would be three hundred dollars an hour that's what it would take for me to train someone like you i don't care if you're a fourth degree black belt in gracie jiu-jitsu and own multiple academies you're a novice martial artist in terms of your mentality and i would have to sort of raise you from babyhood on up to adulthood and, and for that extremely difficult thankless task i would you would have to pay me three hundred dollars an hour in 2023 uh currency adjusted for inflation if you do this later because that's how out of touch you are all right and then you would learn how to strike how to move how to do forms how to hit the bag how to different knuckle in hand positions how to do open hand strikes i would you can definitely break a, a lot of ribs with side kicks and break jaws with hook kicks seen it happen spin hook kicks so you'd be spending a lot of time doing those doing flexibility exercises modifying your stance and don't think for example if because again someone who would say i would break every bone in your body if you did that and you know want to do that but yet be unable because you don't have the knowledge if the lesson ran to an hour and 15 minutes you're paying you know for two hours if it runs one minute over you're paying for the next hour i i don't suffer suffer fools easily i do suffer fools but not easily i don't want to make life easy on you okay and to those of you who you know you see bones get bro broken accidentally in a recreational karate class you see it happen at a class taught in the ymca by a brown belt okay that's how easy it is uh, to miscalculate these things and the tremendous forces involved with something as simple as a, a right cross a reverse punch a palm strike a front thrust kick a side thrust kick a back kick so bit of a rant but some of my subscribers have been responding to this I think it's more like they resonate with this they they know this already but they like hearing it reinforced and if this is all new to you i mean i don't know what to tell you be my student or you know someone that's been in the arts as long as me and, and has mastered striking and throwing okay um that's all i can say have a good one